Offshore wind is a leading renewable energy source and continued growth in this sector is essential for reducing carbon dioxide emissions. A clear understanding of the subsurface geology is critical to the planning, design and safe installation of offshore wind farms. The better we understand ground conditions, the better we can mitigate risks during development. Geology reveals how past climate changes directly impact today's turbine foundations. It helps us link data from geophysical and geotechnical testing, guiding our understanding of how different soil units behave, especially in areas with a complex geological history that incorporates marine to terrestrial, glacial and temperate conditions. To show how the geology can affect wind farm developments, we'll explore the Imudenver Gamma offshore wind farm site in the southern North Sea. Here, turbine foundations extend through over half a million years of sediments, shaped by alternating marine and terrestrial environments. The illustration in this presentation is based on real data and an integrated interpretation. The oldest sediments date back to the early Pleistocene, a time of relatively stable climatic conditions. The base layer for our model, the Armouth Roads Formation, or Unit 31, formed in a deltaic setting fed by rivers from present-day Netherlands and Germany. This layer is highly variable, reflecting its mix of terrestrial and marine influences. In the mid to late Pleistocene, glacial interglacial cycles intensified, leading to big shifts in regional sea levels and major changes in how rivers flowed across the region. During the Elsterian stage, ice advanced into the area for the first time, eroding older soils and carving valleys which were initially infilled with meltwater sediments of varying grain sizes, forming the Pilo Formation, units 28 and 27 in our site. Over time, as ice moved away from the lease area, the exposed sander plain environment would have been cut by rivers and streams, creating a network of crossing channels, some still active and some abandoned, depositing the mixed soils of units 26 to 21. These showed the transition from the glaciofluvial pilo to the fluvial apelsia formation. This was a dynamic time, with ice advancing and retreating, reshaping the landscape repeatedly. After the Elsterian glaciation, rising sea levels partially eroded the older layers before the open marine sediments of the Eggman Ground Formation, Unit 17 and 16, were deposited during the Holsteinian interglacial. However, in the early Salian, cooling returned, sea levels dropped, and the site transitioned from marine to coastal and back to a periglacial environment. This shift is recorded in the Urk and Drachten formations overlying the Edmund Ground Formation in a coarsening upward sequence. The Imuden site remained ice-free during the Salian, with sediments from both meltwater and land-based sources being deposited, forming units 15 and 14. During the Eemian interglacial and early Vyxelian, repeated sea level changes created transgressive erosional surfaces. The marine Eam formation sediments, Unit 13, were deposited, but later partially eroded, surviving only in the west of our lease area. Around 25,000 years ago, during the last glacial maximum, the ice didn't reach the lease site, but lower sea levels exposed the lease area yet again. Soils formed in coastal, nearshore or shallow water, Units 12 and 11, environments before periglacial conditions returned. As the climate warmed, the landscape changed again. Channels formed, partially filled with Naldwick formation sediments of Unit 3, and possibly Crefton Hay or Singraven member river deposits, and temperate vegetation appeared. These were topped by the tidal channel sediments of Unit 2, until full marine conditions returned in the early to mid-Holocene, depositing the Southern Bight Formation as Unit 1, our current seafloor layer. In conclusion, the Imuden Vergama site's geology tells a story of shifting climates and landscapes over hundreds of thousands of years. Understanding this buried history is essential for the safe and effective development of offshore wind infrastructure. As we move toward a low carbon future, we must look to the past to guide sustainable energy development into the future. <laughs>